This is January 21st, 2012, and as I am making this tape, the news is telling me that 250,000 people or homes in the Northwest are without electricity and that the heavy snowstorms that caused this outage may be followed by flooding, which would tend to prolong the disaster. So these people are in a situation where they would be well served by having some emergency power supplies, and that's what I'm going to talk about here. One of the basic components of a backup power supply is a set of batteries, and these two batteries represent the type of batteries that are very commonly used for this application. On the left, we have a typical flooded deep cycle battery. This is a, a marine battery, so it's not really a true deep cycle battery, but it's what's commonly available from places like Costco. On the right, we have an AGM type deep cycle battery. The AGM, I think, is basically the more desirable type of battery because it's a true no maintenance battery. AGM stands for absorb glass mat, and this battery is something that will not spill and requires no maintenance because the acid is basically held in a sponge. On the left, you have a standard flooded type battery. Um, this battery costs about half as much as the AGM battery. The downside of this battery is that it will consume a little bit of water as it is used. Um, that, you know, when you fill up the water, you are slightly exposed to the sulfuric acid if you're not careful. Um, and the other thing is that as it operates, it puts out hydrogen gas, which is highly explosive, and it also puts out some microscopic drops of sulfuric acid. And batteries like this should be in a ventilated space. The battery on the left has an 85 amp hour capacity, and the one on the right, the AGM battery, has a 35 amp hour capacity. You know, and both of these batteries cost about the same number of dollars, around $100. So you can see that um, the cost of the AGM is a lot higher than the flooded battery. So for financial reasons, you may want to go with the deep cycle battery, the flooded battery, as a starter system. The most desirable thing in batteries and the real workhorses in the off-grid world are the L16 batteries, which have about the same footprint as the battery on the left, but they're twice as tall. Um, those batteries cost around $550 to $600 each, but they do store 400 amps of power. So the next issue is what should you use these for? If you're in a cold climate and the power goes out, you are in danger, of course, of freezing to death, which is not a good idea. And you are also at risk of having the pipes in your house burst because of freezing. And so in a cold type of climate, certainly the priority should be to keep your furnace running. And the question would come then, how much capacity do you need to keep the furnace running? And the basic answer is that typical furnaces these days draw about seven amps of power. So if you think about wanting to go to bed at night and sleep normally, you know, you're going to need eight or nine times seven. So that's 50 to 60 amp hours of power that you can use in order to keep your furnace going during the night. That's kind of conservative because furnaces do not run continuously. But in order to provide this kind of power, you should probably have 150 to 200 amp hours of capacity available. And um, if you had two of these uh, Kirkland deep cycle batteries, you'd have enough power for that. I also want to point out that in order to have enough capacity, you're basically going to need to tie two or more batteries together in parallel. And so you'll need to also get the cables that do this. Now another question associated with this is, how do you keep these batteries charged up? And I think the first level answer for this is this set of jumper cables. You can buy an, a generator and that's not a bad idea, but if you own a working automobile, you already own a very powerful charging device. Um, the alternator in a typical small car puts out about 80 amps, and in an SUV or other large vehicle, it could be like 150 amps. So if you keep your gasoline tank filled and you have a good strong starting battery in your car, then your car could be used to top up these batteries as needed.
So we have the question of when should you charge your batteries and the answer comes from having a voltmeter such as this cheap device from Radio Shack. The actual number that you might want to use is that when your voltmeter measures 12.1 volts your batteries are about 40% discharged and it's a good time to recharge them. And if you think about having two of these batteries, uh, these 85 amp hour batteries, then if you start your car and run it for about an hour, possibly less, these batteries will come back up to their full charge, which uh, occurs when the voltmeter says 13 volts or perhaps slightly more. Okay, so assuming that you have enough battery capacity and you have your uh, jumper cables that you can hook to your car to keep them charged up. The next major piece of this system is an inverter and here I have an 1100 watt power bright inverter that I got from Lowe's for about 125 bucks and um, this is enough to keep a furnace running uh, and a few compact fluorescent lights. Uh, in a warm climate this would be enough to keep the refrigerator going now one thing that's nice about this inverter is that when it's running it does have a display that tells you what the current voltage is. So this would be a good way to uh, monitor what's going on in your system. So with these components in place, the batteries, the charging system, and the inverter, you would be ready to think about hooking up to your furnace. Now the problem with a typical furnace hookup is that it's hardwired and in an emergency you might need to um, you know, cut the wires and splice an extension cord, a heavy duty extension cord into those wires. This of course is not the best thing and I certainly don't recommend it. You know, I'm not prescribing this to you. I would suggest that if you have the time to prepare for this that you should have a qualified electrician come in and figure out some way um, to break into that circuit so that if necessary you can plug an emergency power system whether it's a battery based system or generator based system into your furnace and keep it running. Um, you know if you have to sell some stocks or some other paper investments to do this that would be one of the smartest things you could ever do in your life. So I hope this is useful. I know that for some people this is coming too late and for those of you who are at risk because there are more storms out there I certainly encourage you to uh, you know get busy doing some of these things that um, not so long ago the power went out in Los Angeles and was out as much as a week in some places. So we are certainly at risk and these days you know the government is being very honest and they're just saying that these disasters are overwhelming them and uh, not to expect help that we are on our own.